Cool. All right. Um, I put a little bit quick thing here. Oh, good. I, wait, is this the same one? Sorry. I'm thinking myself. Okay. So I have another stats, um, another example of like using um, OLS, but using it with um, for Nova. Um, we have about like 15 minutes or about 10 minutes left. Um, I'll keep going with this way and then we'll talk about A-B tests. Does this sound pretty good to you guys? Okay. So I'm going to use OLS this time because I'm just trying to keep with, you know, what people do. Um, so note that I just got this data um, from basically different chocolate bar ratings. I actually pulled it from Kaggle right here, which has collected it, but the original data was actually from um, this guy right here, member of the Manhattan Chocolate Society. They have, I think they have now 23, almost nearly 2300 or over 2300 different bars rated of different people saying like, what was the rating for each one? Um, so it's kind of fun. Um, so let's say we say, okay, here's our data set. We have basically the company, um, if known, specific bean type, the reference number, review date. So this is all based off reviews, right? Um, cocoa, cocoa, yeah, cocoa percent, um, company location. So what I threw the bar came from, rating, bean type, note that some of these are missing. I'm pretty sure some of these are missing too. Um, and then broad bean origins, like where they originally were from. So not the actual company, but actually like where the beans from. Okay. So um, since we only have 10 minutes, uh, normally what I would do is, well, let me ask you guys, would you guys like to kind of like do a walkthrough with this where you guys kind of design, like kind of try to build this up? Or would you guys like me to kind of speed through just showing you how this works and so we can get to A-B testing? Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's good. I, I gave you guys two options, but you guys quiet. So two is speed through. Uh, one is let's do this together. Three, two, one, vote. Okay, I see mostly two. So I know I don't see Christine or Edward, but that's okay, because I think it's mostly twos anyway. Um, sorry, ones, which I think I only saw Andy, which is okay, um, maybe another time. But let's see here. I, this is where like on the cooking show, it's like I prepared one earlier. So, ta -da. okay. So this is example solution. So this is like me going through, I'll kind of walk through as if I'm going through it real quickly. So one quick thing we want to check out is the columns themselves so we can um, actually refer to them. So I'm just doing the data frame dot columns. Note that basically there's some special characters like new lines and stuff like this. So it's a kind of important thing to note. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and grab only like three different, um, what's it called? Three different features. You could grab more features and stuff, but it's the main thing I want to care about. The main thing I want to look at is if the rating is different. That's kind of like my target variable. I think, okay, this is the thing I want to see. Does the rating have an, um, is the rating affected by uh, the percent of cocoa and then like, the um, company location? Okay, so maybe there's like, you know, some companies are better at making, I don't know, chocolate. Um, so we check this out real quick, um, just to kind of make sure. So I'm just making sure this works fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so run all above. I just want to make sure that I, if I change something at some point, you know, just messing around with it, that it's not going to affect us. Okay. So now I'm just getting these guys right here. So some quick things I would have you guys normally do is like, well, okay, one thing you might want to do is just literally rename, you know, how these columns are, especially because there's like new characters and stuff like this. So note, for example, I'm changing percent into just percent and then company location into location. And there we go. So it's nice and pretty. Um, then I'm actually going to go ahead, in this case, get the percent uh, column, right? And if you notice real quickly, there's a percent sign in there, which is no good, right? We want actual numbers because it should be a number. So I'm just going to take this guy, the percent column itself. I'm going to save that to the percent column, but I'm going to convert it over. I'm going to take the string. Um, so this is a string method, right? And basically do R strip. So that's going to get rid of the percent sign. And then I'm going to change it to a different type. So I can actually use dot as type. I'm going to convert it to a float and then divide by 100 because it's a percent, right? So if I do this guy right here, you will see I now have 0.63. Cool. All right. Nice and easy. Um, just to kind of confirm, I have another, I call it numerics just because I was playing around with it before, but that's okay. So now we have this data frame. Now we just basically use OLS here. So OLS is based around closer to how R, um, the R programming language actually does like ANOVA and different statistics and stuff like this, um, which is why a lot of statisticians who came from statistics, who knows R, they tend to use OLS because that's just kind of familiar. It's designed to like emulate that. Um, but the main thing here is we have something called a formula, right? So our formula basically is our model. So sometimes you can see that people call this model or a formula or whatever, right? And the way um, OLS takes it in basically is you write it out. Um, this is actually very close to actually how you would write this in R. 
Um, but you say the rating, or sorry, you take your target. So our target is our rating. We want to predict our rating, right? To say like, does rating actually, you know, change based on percent and location? Now, percent is just a value. So you can kind of think of this as being like the rating is equal to some number times the percent, right? So if you knew like some like coefficient factor, like we can like multiply it by three or divide by two or whatever, like that would be like something times percent. Plus, well, location is not a number, right? It's just like France or whatever the different values are. We could check those out specifically if you wanted to. Um, but it really doesn't make sense to treat it like as a number, like France is not a number. So we actually can say, hey, this is a categorical variable. And we can talk about this in linear regression, but basically in short, it says, oh, I'm just going to consider this as like, is it in category A or category zero, one, two, three, or four? Is it France or is it America? Is it, you know, UK, is it whatever? And that's how it basically does this part, okay? So um, I'm pulling this in together, LM. So this is LM stands for, anyone got a guess? Linear model. Linear model, model. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh good. There's a little bit of delay, so that's good. Uh, linear model, right? So um, OLS is actually gonna take that formula, take in our data, and it's going to fit, basically take this data and try to fit um, this data onto that specific formula, our model. And this is gonna create our linear model, so. We got a linear model here. And so just to kind of show you guys what this looks like. It runs really quickly. And then we say, okay. And then ANOVA, or sorry, um, OLS, I will actually produce with uh, stats models, dot stats, ANOVA, um, LM. You can pass the linear model and you can actually generate this table and we can actually see this, what we call an ANOVA table. So this is very classical statistics and stuff like this. And I think we've seen this a little bit before in the question. Is that right? And give me a little nod if that. Okay, um, so the main thing here is sum of squares. We talked about what sum of squares is, so we can say like, oh, that's where this is calculated. Uh, degrees of freedom, DF, right? Basically saying how many degrees of freedom. So there are 60 different locations. So note that that's like the degrees of freedom. Uh, one right here is just because there's only one category for um, percent. And then we have our F statistic. And then on the far right, we have our p-value. So you can see the p-values are re really, really small. So there is, a, um, there is an effect between percent Oh, sorry, location is location's right here. So there is a difference between location and rating. And there's also an effect for percent in rating. Um, so that's kind of like what it's telling you. But it doesn't tell you, for example, location. It's not telling you what location, you know, has like, you know, significant effect. It just says, oh, location in general does have an effect on rating, but isn't a significant effect. But it doesn't tell you which location has like the most effect or if all locations actually matter or not. Okay, maybe just France. Maybe if it's made in France, that's the only thing that matters. Um, that's a possibility. Okay, um, so yeah. Yeah, Kiva. Firstly, uh, I'm in a warning that you know, somebody set an alarm. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. and uh, secondly, why specifically an F is, is a new specifically using F distribution? So an F distribution, basically, the reason why um, analysis of variance, ANOVA, basically um, is using, it's more of a term of saying, oh, we are calling, like, we're, analyzing the variance and an F uh, ratio and F um, is basically looking at the specific uh, variation or sorry, the variance. So that's why we end up actually using an F, you know, it's an F T test or F, F test. Um, but you'll hear people talk about like as ANOVA, they're actually kind of one in the same in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. 